Jake, you discussed how um, individuals in the campus community. <laughs> all right. Um, you discussed how uh, we want to utilize the things that are already in place in order to um, further uh, initiatives. And Tur, you talked about you wanted to make sure that students had uh, a vested interest in understanding who their representatives are. One large part of the student experience and uh, groups that really work on improving everyday issues are student advisory committees, which happen for campus uh, services as well as academic departments and other things around university. Currently, student advisory committees have no central authority in order to help them foster success and sustainability. Um, th a lot of them uh, don't operate on a, a regular basis. They don't have any um, kind of basis of knowledge to work on to maintain um, effective communications with their departments. And sometimes the departments themselves don't make sure that they actually happen. So what can the uh, student body executive branch help to make sure that these very integral parts are expanded and proliferated and, make, and to make them more sustainable and more successful? Is this question for both candidates? Yes. Well, thank you for the question, Zach. I think it raises a very interesting point that both Kelsey and I can attest to. Uh, being part of a smaller department like material science, uh, our student advisory committee is usually comprised of a couple of people. But working with other committees, I think, is that, is that sort of you're wondering how are we going to get them to sort of unite and work with each other to increase attendance? Or, I'm sorry. It, So I think a way that we can do that is effectively show that our faces are there for our student government. So sort of being a role model, but also looking at things like I had mentioned before that the way that we're going to reach out to the graduate students is to, you know, it's departmental based. And I think this sort of follows through with you know, what your question is. So we want to listen. And it's also, it's also active listening, I think. So this is something, a concern that we really haven't heard before. And I think that it's very important if we were to reach out to the student advisory committees. And we can do that effectively by going and working with the departments, hearing them, and making sure that we're out there. We're out there for them and their concerns. And possibly working with you, you know, your experience, and, and students like you who are interested in increasing attendance in the student advisory committees. Um, also, with the idea of the innovation chair, the point of having that is like a central hub, of uh, one person who knows all of the concerns, um, such as Greeks, student dormitories, and maybe the student advisory councils. I think that would be a very appropriate um, group that to also put into that chair. So having one central person address everyone's concerns, so they're kind of the, the go-to person for all of the issues, and having that be worked into the campus initiatives. All right, so this, this question hits on several different types of student advisory committees. You have academic student advisory committees and service student advisory committees. And in nature, they're both very different. And that first needs to be realized. So I'll start with academics and then go to the services. So for the academics, a lot of it is base, based off of how much departmental support there is for those, uh, count, for those committees. If there is a, a department that doesn't have the support for the, if there's students that want to have the Student Advisory Council, they don't have the support of that department, then nothing gets done. So the goal would be there to be working with those departments to try and help get support for student feedback. Uh, the first place to start would be working with the current Academic Affairs Chair who knows, and, and Senate, who knows a lot of Student Advisory Councils, and have that actually documented and given to the Academic Liaison Cabinet member what has already been created this past year. Keeping that position, which is already designed to do this. So make that person the centralized hub for all this information and academic related. So going through the services, that is working with um, the already legislative bodies in creating these uh, committees. We already have created the, you've created the Health SAC uh, this year, which has been very successful. And that what we need to do is be working with these departments that have services on campus and using models of other student advisory councils that we have that have been proven to be successful, such as the Health SAC, such as DSAC, and having these be models to build these student advisory councils and ones that don't have it. 
and we can bring back what used to happen in my freshman year in Senate, where with a lot of these advisory councils that we pushed to continue to meet, have senators uh, and GSA members, if they feel that it is an issue for them as well, to have a spot as a representative on these committees in addition to students. Thank you. Um, you can all move down if you'd like. We can get more people in line here. That's called bringing the plus when you leave your environment better than when you found it. Hi guys, um, my name is Amy Kiste. Um, and I was wondering, what does diversity mean to you? Why is it important? And how are both of your plans to address this going to enrich the CMU community? Why is it gonna make me happier? Uh, as I said earlier, that diversity is something that the administration pushes for continuously at this school. And for us, at, for what I've seen and from what a lot of people's, uh, a lot of other students' perspectives, I've heard a lot of, um, although they try to pursue uh, diversity, it's a lot of segregation because it's, uh, oh, let's, you know, have a diverse event, um, but we'll have, you know, this ethnicity and this ethnicity, this is ethnicity and people group off. So we found that a better way to encourage diversity is to actually get people to come together, not really like, oh, let's have each one represent what they Rep, like, la, let's have each one of them display what they represent. Rather, let's have them come together. I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but it's a lot about um, integration. So we think that it was really important to, and it sounds bad, but incentives always important, right? So to get people to come to events that are that do educate people call, about different cultures, I think it's really important to incentivize. So we thought that this diversity honors um, program that I don't know if you read about in our platform. But it is an idea where if people, uh, if students are encouraged to attend events from small to big, um, whether it's like the Meyer show or it's something simple like a just a fun event like where some you know, TSA is selling something, you know, just to go. Um, and so we think it's really important to not only encourage attendance to those, but to to get students to want to do them. So by giving them this incentive, they'll have the they'll feel the need to go over to a certain all different types of event throughout the semester and throughout their four years here, not just a one year thing, um, so that, that by the time they graduate, we will not only award them for being, uh, but with a stole, but we'll award them with a certificate and it, like this will encourage um, full roundedness of a student, you know, it's not just about doing well academically, it's a, a lot about being involved in extracurriculars and being involved in other areas of campus and learning a lot from what this campus has to offer. So that's what diversity yeah, we feel that the Diversity Advisory Council is already doing a good job bringing diversity here. It's about integrating that diversity that they've already brought. <laughs> I think diversity is different for everyone. And as Latino, student, both from San Antonio and, and here at Carnegie Mellon, who has been involved with organizations like Salsa and CMARC and has been an origins counselor, I think people have different views about what diversity is here on campus. And I think the Diversity Advisory Council has done a wonderful job of pushing forward with what they planned. And I know this year they pushed forward for meaningful engagement. And this is something that when we met with President Cohen initially, he had said, really understand what meaningful engagement means. And I think what he meant, and I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but I think what he meant was identifying what organizations like Nesby, Spirit, Salsa, SHIP, what worked for them and what didn't. Because I think organizations that are smaller, that try to incite diversity in the community, they have good years and they have bad years. And as president and vice president, I want to make sure that everyone has a good year. And I don't think you can put a point on diversity. I think diversity is something that you engage in with discussion, with 
exciting people about the culture. It's not about going to an event, and it's not about getting a point. It's not about getting a certificate of honor. This is something that you should find honor in within yourself to go forward and to be diverse and to be proud that you are part of a community that is a global community. And uh, that's why you should care. Go ahead. This question is specifically for Jake and Sangeeta. Uh, how are you specifically qualifying events as diverse or counting or not diverse or not counting? Thank you. All right, so that is something that's going to have to take. Uh, it's not a decision that we're going to make by ourselves. What we want to do is interact with some of the councils that are already out there, uh, such as DAC, and talk to them about um, the mission statement of diversity that Carnegie Mellon has and start that as our baseline. And from there, we need to work on trying to look at with the VPO, uh, who, whoever is elected next year, work with them with the student organizations that are already created and going through their events that are much more uh, traditioned on campus and looking at those first. And through that and with a small group of, of a task force, we can look through and find the events that create a more balanced uh, view of culture-based events that happen on campus. Uh, a lot of us off the top of our head can think of, you know, big ones off, you know, Barmer in the Berg or One Night in Beijing, but these are just, uh, these are big examples, but there's a lot more smaller examples that take much more focus to make sure that we know of them and are able to put them into this program. Again, this is, this program's in development stage. This is the idea that we want to push forward uh, to let people have some sort of incentive to go to these groups and because of that, grow as an individual by the experiences that they receive. And it's something that, it, it does need to be developed, but it's something that we will have to work on, not just with just us two, but with a group. 